BQ's back, baby, and it's time to engage chase mode because there's a Tarek Sandpiper in the United States. Hit the music! This is Birding with BQ. Living hard to bird hard. All the time. We are live on I-95 North in Connecticut after a heinously early departure today as right now Chad Hutchinson and I are in hot pursuit of a Tarek Sandpiper. Named after the Tarek River that runs through Georgia and Russia, the Tarek Sandpiper is a very distinct looking shorebird species whose native range lies mostly within the eastern hemisphere of the world. Chad and I have chased many birds together over the years, but this Tarek Sandpiper is a whole other level of rare. In the birding world, this bird is what we call a mega. So if you're playing the game of birding where you're trying to find as many different birds to add to your life list or state list or county list or whatever, this is the fourth time in history you've been able to add this bird to your United States list without having to fly to Alaska to see it. But when it comes to finding a mega, they don't occur in the United States that often. And oftentimes when they do show up, it's a matter of how far away you are from it to get there. And some birders who are super serious will go to great lengths, even flying across the country to see just one species pieces of bird. What was our best chase before this, Chad? I would say it would be the trifecta of varied thrush, boreal chickadee, and barrow's golden eye. We chased all three of those birds between Pennsylvania and New Jersey a couple of years ago, but all those species are only regionally rare because they all nest in the United States. This sandpiper we're going after today, this is the fourth record of this species in the lower 48 United States. The Tarek Sandpiper would also be a huge get on my quest for 2020. My goal to capture 200 different species of birds on video before the end of the year. So to give a timeline of the Tarek Sandpiper, it was first discovered this past Sunday at Napa Tree Point in Rhode Island. This past Sunday I wasn't able to go chase it because I was on my way home from Pittsburgh, but I did get to pick up a Swainson's Warbler for the state of Pennsylvania on my way home. The bird was then again seen on Monday, but I was unfortunately unable to go chase again because I had already agreed to complete a survey for the Philadelphia Breeding Bird Census, where we discovered by complete coincidence and by accident my 312th Pennsylvania bird. And now for the world premiere of my 312th Pennsylvania bird, the gull billed turn. Mama mia! Mama mia! Completely unexpected. But again, gold-billed tern are only regionally rare. They don't breed that far away from Pennsylvania. And although they are quite rare to the state of Pennsylvania, they are nowhere near as rare to the area as this Tarek Sandpiper is. Now it's Tuesday. Chad and I left the Philadelphia region at three o'clock in the morning as we are driving from Philadelphia area to Rhode Island. About a four and a half hour drive here, all for this rarity, the Tarek Sandpiper. So Chad, I've got to know, what does this chase mean to you? Well, this will be my farthest drive for a bird. It will be the most rare bird I've gone after and my first mega. For me, this is my second longest chase I've ever been on, only rivaled by the Great Black Hawk, which was about a 12 hour drive all the way from Philadelphia to Maine for another bird that was a huge mega a couple years ago. BQ, there's my highway. Hutchinson Parkway. I mean my Parkway. You own this chase mode, brother. That's my road, brave it. Brave it. It's a brave it. <laughs> we need our coffee. Four and a half hours later, Chad Hutchinson and I have finally arrived here in Rhode Island. And right now, we're getting ourselves geared up to head all the way down the point. Straight behind us this way, in search of the Tarek Sandpiper. Now that we're here at Napa Tree Point, the bird is about a mile trek all the way down the beach, so we gotta hoof it. And you better believe when we're in chase mode for a mega, there's no time to wait around and do whatever. I gotta take my second breakfast with me on the go. Got a lot of birders heading out, but a lot of birders also coming back, many of whom having just seen the sandpiper. Wow, look at that. I must admit, it's taking a lot of willpower for me to get straight on target here because I keep seeing people and saying hi, you know, scarfing down my second breakfast, seeing a lot of cool birds on the way, but eyes on the prize here, folks. Come on. Come on. Oh. 
Well, found the spot where the bird's being seen. You can see all the birders. Problem is, it's all the way down the beach from here. We got more huffing to do. Chad, you ready? All right. Everybody's looking. When a mega shows up, the crowds do the same. Moments before our arrival, the Tarek Sandpiper was perched in front of everyone to offer up great views. Right before we arrived, the bird took off and flew across the bay to Sandy Point, all the way on the other side of the bay. Now that we know the bird is here, we're going to wait it out to see if the bird comes back to this side. And in the meantime, there is no shortage of great birding to be done as we wait for the return of the Sandpiper. The Endangered Piping Plover. Piping plover look quite similar to semi-palmated plover, which are far more common. However, piping plover have that sandy coloration compared to the darker color of the semi-palmated plover. And if you notice, that bow tie that comes across the chest, that black band, is undone. Yeah, the piping plover looks like you, you have a tuxedo and you undid the, the bow tie after a long wedding. One hour since we've last seen the sandpiper. Hopefully it makes its presence known once again to us. Yeah, these little islands here with these gullies, we're not here any longer. Two hours since we last seen the bird, and those don't really happy clouds. And as you wait for the return, you can see that the crowd is building. Probably about 50 people here, all waiting for a glimpse. Least turn. The tiniest turn we have around here, if you notice, it's got that bright yellow bill and that white face patch. Chad and I have been very patiently waiting for this bird to come to this side of the bay. However, time is starting to run out since we have a five-hour drive back to Philadelphia from here. And now for the world premiere of my 614th life bird, the Tarek Sandpiper. Mama Mia! Although, man, terribly distant views. So the bird is back here at Sandy Point. This is the scope right now at 25 times power. Here, we're gonna zoom in. Here's the scope at 60 times power, obviously being obscured big time by heat shimmer, but walking right to left, Tarek Sandpiper. Been here a couple hours now. We've had the opportunity to see this bird twice, all the way on the other side of the bay here on Sandy Point. So it's been very distant dots. Chad, how do you feel about this experience so far? It's a bit of a letdown. It's great to get it, but wish it was closer. But you know what? I'll wait. See, this is how we should have done it. These guys clearly mean serious business. Out here, working the shoreline. Entering our fifth hour here on the beach. Should have brought some snacks with us. That was a uh, amateur mistake. They're in the car. The dude is right under the bird right now. So jealous. Look at this kayaker out there. It's an intrepid explorer. I might give him a hundred bucks, see if I can borrow that thing for a half an hour. You can see the sandpipers up there to the right. A lucky dog. So Chad and I have given ourselves officially a 30 minute warning, a hard stop 30 minute warning. No lingering, no 30 more minutes, no 10 more minutes, no five more minutes because not only do we have a five hour drive back to Philadelphia, but we have to walk over a mile from where we are here on the beach back to our cars that hopefully doesn't have a parking ticket on it. Birders staked out all over, just hoping this bird comes back to this side. Here with Mike Heron. Mike, it's so amazing to finally get to meet you here in person at this amazing bird. What does this sandpiper mean to you? Oh, the sandpiper means a lot to me, man. It's one of those things where I wasn't going to chase it and ended up waking up in the morning, feeling pretty good about it. Came down, BQ and I got a, got a look described as an ant on a shoreline, but we're still out here trying for it. I'm about to go move my car, see what we can get in a couple hours. Boy, that parking ticket and get that bird. How's that sound? Sounds about right, BQ. So much awesome birding here. Wish I could stay all day to wait for the sandpiper, but alas, Five and a half hours later, Chad and I have finally pulled the plug. We stayed here at Napa Tree Point 
Big sit style, perched up with the crowd of people looking for the Tarek Sandpiper. Very distant views of it, so I wouldn't necessarily say great views. Maybe fine views. I'd go with fair views. Fair is <laughs> fair to say. But you know what? I'm still thankful that we got to chase this. And I have to say that we did some really great birding today with a lot of really cool stuff all around here. We big sat and we big sat real hard. I would say almost too hard because we didn't bring any snacks with us. That was a mistake. But at least I got a rosy at turn, lifer. Lifer? Oh man, I've never been more thrilled to be walking <laughs> on concrete after that walk on the beach. After all that standing around. No doubt. We finally made it back to the car. And you know what? We only had one parking ticket. I consider this parking ticket kind of like a ticket master convenience fee, except maybe like a, a lifer convenience fee, you know? You know, ticket master charges you the extra money when you buy something from them. They call it a convenience fee. You know, convenient for who? I don't know. No matter what the cost of this ticket is, definitely worth the trip. 11 hours later, and we're back on the George Washington Bridge with one Tarek Sandpiper. 15 hours later, we've arrived back here in Pennsylvania. What an incredible day here, Chad, don't you think? It was a very amazing day. We would have liked to have gotten better looks, but we'll take what we can get. Distant Tarek Sandpiper is better than no Tarek Sandpiper at all. How many lifers for you today? Two, Rosie at Turn and Tarek Sandpiper. And I had one with the Tarek Sandpiper. So who knows what's gonna engage Chase Bone next, but you better believe when it happens, we're gonna be there to chase it. So Chad, tell him how we're gonna stay. Stay fresh and peace out, y'all. Well, I thought I was done with Rhode Island, but it turns out that Rhode Island was not done with me. On the next, Birding with BQ. And after my second four hour drive in six days, I've arrived here once again to Napa Tree Point and chase mode is officially on.